<clears throat> All right, hello guys. Uh, Mr. Hudson here again. We are going to dive into chapter three, talking about rate of change in slope. So you can see here is that rate of change shows the relationship between two changing quantities. One quantity depends on the other. So our rate of change always has the dependent on top and the independent variable on bottom. So let's think about an example like that, where what's on top depends on what's on bottom. So if you think about like snowfall, everyone loves a good snow day. So if it's snowing three inches in every hour, we might know this because uh, in the course of let's say uh, three hours, which time is always independent, time just happens. It is, It does not wait for anything, it's not dependent on anything. Um, but the snow, well, let's say we had nine inches of snow in the course of three hours, so that then would let us simplify this ratio or this rate of change into three inches in one hour. So that's one way that we can talk about a rate of change or if water is rising or falling um, or anything like that. So we're gonna use that in this chapter to uh, then talk about slope of a line and everything else. So when we look at finding a rate of change in a table, it all comes back to um, your independent and your dependent variables. So we know that um, time is always independent. So our independent variable is always our x and our dependent variable is y. And the distance that you can walk or a turtle can walk or an airplane can descend, uh, that all depends on how long it's been doing it. So again, over here, we could label time as our x and our feet of elevation, y. Um, so now determine if each of these is constant. So a constant rate of change will have the same rate of change in your y as it does compared to your x. Um, if those are consistent, so let's say this is a change of six and this is a change of one, we want this to be the same the rest of the way down. So is this change one? Yes, it is. And is this change one? Yes, it is. So if we come over here, is this change six? No, that is a change of plus three. And this change then is a change of six, but because we have that one off change um, right here from two to three, that makes this a not constant rate of change. Go ahead and try number two. See if you can tell if it is a constant rate of change or if it changes. So pause the video now. So this problem, if you caught on, is a little bit more difficult because the time variable does not stay the same uh, in how much it changes. So it goes up by two, then it goes up by three, then it goes up by seven. Uh, so this is not as easy to look at. Uh, so then when we compare our elevation change, we change by 1,000, we change by 1,500, and we change by 3,500, um, all descending. So to look at this rate of change, we really need to talk about the dependent over the independent. So remember, our dependent is always something like height or distance and our independent is time, which in this case is minutes. And we wanna talk about the change in, so we're gonna use this symbol, delta. It's a Greek symbol, represents change in, we use in mathematics. So go ahead and set up for each of these situations, the change in feet over the change in time. If you haven't done it yet, pause the video, check each of these, their uh, rate of change. All right, so when we set up each of these, uh, so I grab the negative 1,000, put it over 2, do the same with 1,500 over 3, and the same with the negative 3,500 over 7, and we do in fact get all of them to equal negative 500, which means that really that's saying that it descends 500 feet per minute. So that's pretty fast if you ask me. So we can say descends 500 feet each minute because D means to go down. So that takes care of our negative right here. All right, probably one of the most common ways that we talk about slope when we're able to see a graph is the rise over run method. And to do that, we talk about the rising variable or the Y over the running variable or the X. 
So we set this up and we often talk about the slope as a uh, variable m. So we say that our slope m is the rise over the run and we actually then write that as the delta y over the delta x. <clears throat> we do this because uh, y obviously is our vertical axis so it is where we rise uh, and x is our horizontal so which is where we quote unquote run. So we go from point to point. You always have to pick a point on the graph that is at the vertex of your x and y coordinates. Um, so here I'm at this point negative 3, 1. So if I want to make a note of that. And then here's another point over here that we see my x-axis value is 2, my y is 3. So we can call this 2, 3. And then I can um, make a little right triangle actually. So we go from the one point horizontally till we get in line with our second point and then we go vertically so we can actually then look at that triangle that we've made and talk about the rise and run that exists on of that triangle so the run here one two three four five so we have a horizontal change of five my rise from that line where my point originated up to the other is two and we always talk about this left to right. So see how we've gone left to right and then bottom to top because it went up. So now we can set my rise over my run. So the M for this graph or my slope would be my rise of two over my run of five, which cannot really be simplified. It can be turned into a decimal. We could say it's 0 0.4. Sometimes the decimal value is easier. Other times the uh, fraction is easier. I often like it in the ratio just written. Uh, so you can leave this one as 2 fifths. So now try B on your own. Pause the video and see if you can figure out the slope. All right, so then if we look at the rise or run on this line from point to point, we go um, 2 down to get on the line of my next point, and then we go 6 over actually. So my rise, well, since we went 2 down, is a negative 2. Make sure that you notate that. And then my run is 6, which anytime we can reduce, we want to reduce. So we get negative 1 over 3. And I like to write the fractions with the negative out in front of the fraction. So it is negative 1 third. Pause the video and solve for 3 and 4 right now. So then we come to find out that the rise here is 1, the run is 3, so that gives me a slope of 1 third. Notice it's always increasing left to right when it's positive, so here I'm decreasing left to right. So we go down by 5 over by 2, which gives me negative 5 over 2. Now you could leave it like this, and sometimes it's nice to leave it improper, uh, but you could also write it as the mixed number or the decimal value. So pause the video here for just a moment and make sure that all of this makes sense. How you get your x1, y1 and your x2, y2 We're going from one point to the next point. And it doesn't matter which way you go, honestly, um, but it's easier to go left to right. Uh, so here we have x1, y1 and then x2, y2. And why can uh, x2 minus x1 not be zero? Well, that's because that is your denominator and you cannot divide by zero. All right, so then when we're trying to find the slope given two points, it's easiest to rename my points and think of them as like an x1 and a y1 and then an x2 and a y2 to help us remember what is what. You can also look at these as what is the horizontal change compared to what is the vertical change. You just have to make sure that you keep those straight. So here, if I look at the horizontal change from one to four, that's 3. My vertical change from 3 to negative 1, well that's a change of negative 4. And then I have to remember that this is rise over run to talk about slope. So my rise or my vertical change would be the negative 4. My run, my horizontal change would be the 3. I would honestly leave the slope written as negative 4 thirds. Go ahead and try 5 and 6 on your own. Pause the video now. All right, so this is where people then make mistakes. So if I set up delta y over delta x, and I say, all right, that's going to be y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, even when we label things, people still can make mistakes here. 
So my y2 would be 8 minus my y1 of 1. My x2 is 4. Here's another good opportunity for mistakes. This is x2 minus x1, and x1 itself is already negative 6. So you got to be careful about that. That then 8 minus 1 gives me 7 in the numerator. 4 minus a negative 6, well, minus a negative. We know that those actually combine to make addition. So that is 7 tenths. So then when we look at number 6 and set up our y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, again, we have minus a negative. That then makes addition. And negative 4 plus 3 equals negative 1 all over 3. So you get negative 1 third. Sorry for writing off on the slope. Uh, still getting used to this smart pad. All right, so here then is the summary of what we've learned about slope so far. Uh, one of the things also to pay close attention to is that our vertical and horizontal lines here, those are our special cases of slope. So a vertical line having a y change that is basically uncountable compared to the zero change of x, well, that'd be an infinite y change over zero, which cannot happen, which is there, then why this is called an undefined slope. For a horizontal change, well, that the y change is zero over what is basically an uncountable x change because we can never see where it begins or ends. So that would be zero over infinity. And we know that zero divided by anything is zero because if I just look at a short segment of this line, I can have a zero change over, uh, there it'd be a change of four, and that would again be zero. So any horizontal line has a zero slope because it does not go up or down, it just stays flat. All right, in five seconds, figure out what the slope of these two lines are. Five, four, three. And a vertical line is always, that's right, undefined. And a horizontal line is always zero for a horizontal. So if we move on here, go ahead and uh, make sure that you got your practice done for these. Um, check out 3.2 if you already feel confident on 3.1. Um, this practice should be pretty quick, actually. Let me know if you have any issues, comments, or concerns. Other than that, have a great day.